everyone, and welcome to another A and B Horror Movies video. I'm Aaron. I'm Ben. And today we are joined by a very special guest, Todd Nunes. Todd, welcome. Hello. Welcome. Uh, welcome. Thank you. We're very happy to have you on here. Yep. Um, Todd, I guess I would say that you wear multiple hats. You're a director, you're a writer, you're a producer, you're an editor, um, jack of all trades, I guess. That sums it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's important. I mean, especially when you're working in the low budget arena. I mean, you have the opportunity to have a lot more say in your production. So it does benefit you to be able to to do all of these uh, other tasks, especially with the editing, because you can turn in your own uh, director's yeah. copy. Yes, yeah. you get into what you want. Um, and I should have exactly. mentioned this specifically, we are going to be talking about All Through the House, Todd's movie that came out a few years ago. Um, awesome Santa Claus here. And if you'll notice his shirt has the uh, a similar Santa Yes, Claus. I do. It's uh, Lita Velasco played uh, uh, our killer Santa Claus. He was amazing. He's a, a, a great actor who can can portray a character without even seeing his face, without even facial expressions. You see it all in his movement and his body. And uh, yes, yes. And oh, I and just the, wanted to give him mask. a shout out. The mask is awesome. Um, well, Ben, why don't you yeah, uh, we, pick... we, go ahead? Oh, no, I was like, we tried like 20 different variations, different types of masks. We did photo shoots with all of them, but this, this was the one that really uh, jumped out, spoke to us. This was it That's as soon awesome. as he had it on. Perfect choice. Yeah. <laughs> ben, you want to go ahead with the first question? Well, uh, that that was uh, one of the questions I did have about the mask, but um, you sort of asked that. So I'll, um, I want to know: was it always going to be a Christmas slasher, or did that that come about later? Or no, it was always going to be a Christmas slasher. When I was in uh, high school, I I would do my own plays, like I did Friday the Thirteenth, I did Halloween. And then I started writing my own. I did a couple of other horror slashers. And one of them was a Christmas uh, slasher movie that a lot of my friends from high school were like, is this like the, the play you did in high school? That It's not like it. But I've always had such a uh, fascination with Christmas and horror, the mix, because Christmas really comes to life at night. And with the lights, and it has such a great atmosphere for it that it's just something I've always wanted to do. So right off the bat, it was going to be a Christmas slasher movie. Cool. Awesome. So um, I actually just watched it recently, uh, and I loved it. Um, so I'm so happy that you Thank are here you. To, to talk with us about it. Um, one thing I wanted to ask about is the effects. The special effects, they all seem to be real. like No CGI, as far as I could tell. Um, what was that? What was that like filming? Was it was it fun? Was it challenging? Um, did you? I, well, I don't the know. special effects, obviously, so much fun, right? Because you know that's <laughs> like you see this, and it's a, that's that's when the slasher movie becomes a slasher movie. Yes. And I absolutely did not want to do any kills off screen. I'm not a, a fan of that. I mean, if I'm doing a want to watch a slasher movie, I want to see it. I want to see the practical effects. I want to see the blood. That's part of the fun. That's part of the ride. So right away, half the budget was going to special effects. And, awesome. and that's, that's, yeah, that's where we started. Everything had to be bloody. We had to figure out, you know, it, it's very challenging. Um, and I can see why people skip over it because it costs money, it costs time. And there's a cleanup to it that is insane. It's a lot of blood. And yeah. uh, so you have to be really careful about how you design your scenes and where they're taking place. You know, if you're filming in grandma's living room, you're probably not going to be able to chop somebody's head off. So you have to be very uh, creative with the planning process of that to make it all, Makes all sense. work uh, accordingly. Yeah. How many gallons of fake blood did you use? Do you have any idea? We had a lot of fake blood. There was just <laughs> fake blood. There was, uh, we did one of these scenes in actually my bathroom and there was just blood everywhere. It was pools of blood. It, I thought I was never going to get, it was on the ceiling. It was everywhere. <laughs> and uh, it had to be paint, repainted and it was, just took a long time to clean it all up, but it was worth it in the end. I wouldn't have it any other way. Awesome. Yeah, I think so too. What do you got, Ben? Right. Um, I'd like to know uh, when you filmed, what time of year was it? Because there was a lot of decorations and stuff, and obviously the decorations in the house were just. We actually filmed during the summer. 
All right. <laughs> yeah, it was summer. It was hot. It was not the best time to film a Christmas uh, horror movie. It doesn't get dark until like nine o'clock in L.A. So we were always having to sit around and wait for the sun to go down and a lot of incidents. Um, yeah, but it took a, a lot of planning. And that was one of the reasons why it was so important to have everything drenched in Christmas. Just yes. every scene, I wanted it to feel like Whoville. And like Christmas threw up everywhere. And even when we would go into the bathrooms, it was like, wait a minute, it just doesn't seem right unless we decorate this bathroom. So we would have to <laughs> decorate the bathroom and put stuff everywhere because when there wasn't anything Christmas, it felt out of place. It didn't feel like it belonged. So it just became this spiral, just sort of out of control of uh, Christmas decorations. That's that took awesome. almost a year to collect. I was actually that was my question. I don't think I've ever seen so many Christmas decorations. How did you how did you amass such a, a collection? Well, we we a lot of people have a lot of Christmas decorations in their garage that they don't use anymore because people continually get new stuff. So we got a lot of stuff handed down to us. We put out a big, you know, please help us give us everything you don't want. And then everything else we were getting at yard sales and uh, flea markets and uh and after christmas sales and so it just kept accumulating and it got bigger and bigger and bigger well i would think after christmas it's probably easier to find some cheaper christmas decorations yeah. because people aren't really yeah. in the uh, holiday season in july yeah yeah and flea markets are great because like nobody's selling a, a santa claus statue you know when it's not in season for very much right of course so those yeah we could get we got a lot of that stuff for very very cheap and how about the mannequins? Did you find those at flea markets? No, the mannequins we actually got donated to us. I, I hauled around to a bunch of different department stores. And so I had to deal with the, um, the junior college in Los Angeles that I would get these, use these for my movie, and then I would donate them to the school so that they could have them to use for lighting and, and costumes and all of that stuff so oh, i was awesome. able to get them donated to me and then i donated them to the the college oh that's very cool yeah, yeah you got to be creative when you're dealing with a low budget you got to be very very creative <laughs> <laughs> you say low budget but and you said you filmed it in the summer but i thought you yeah. had a really good winter look to the film which is why i asked when you done it because i thought you done a really good job of it so yeah yeah well we had everybody dressed in in uh very warm clothes, which was, you know, difficult. We had people standing by with cardboards, making wind. I knew we couldn't have snow, but wind was important. So if you saw trees or bushes, they were always sort of moving because somebody was back there with a piece of cardboard <laughs> blowing it at them. And, and the actors, you know, would act like it was cold. And so it, it played off. Awesome. Did anyone faint from heat exhaustion? <laughs> no, nobody faded from heat exhaustion, <laughs> but people would just like get out of their jackets as soon as the scene was over, you know, with the lights and the inside would get really, really hot. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. So that. We filmed in someone's garage and it was, yeah, it was, it was kind of painful. It was so and you, hot. And you wouldn't know it, like Ben, like you were saying, you wouldn't notice that oh, it, it was really hot and, you, and you'd think you'd see people sweating and you didn't, I mean, I guess makeup and. Um, yeah, we had to constantly do that to people, especially during one part where we were filming in somebody's garage. And oh my gosh, it was it was torturous. We would every, lift the garage door open, and everybody would come running outside and breathing. So yeah, water, I need water. Yes, we have lots of water. Um, I understand it was a, a family affair. Your sister is the lead, um, Ashley Mary yeah. Jonas. Um, Yes. What was the uh, one? Well, I guess what was it like working with family on the set, and what was the casting process like? Um, and Jessica Cameron is in it. She's a she played a great role, and uh, yeah. Martha Stone, Melinda Keering was awesome as the uh, the mother. Yes. The next door. Yeah. Yes, the next door yeah. neighbor. Um, yeah, Melinda Keering. Yeah, she is amazing. My sister is amazing. So is Jessica Cameron. Um, my sister, I, I, I mean, I've worked with my sister ever since she was little. So that was just sort of, you know, we were always doing movies. I was always, my parents would come home and we'd be on the roof 
you know, and at trying to kill somebody and somebody jumping off and we'd have these big lights out there and the neighbors would always complain. So we were always doing stuff like that with everybody in my family. But I also knew that with my sister, I could get everything I needed with that character, which was a lot of it, not just the acting, but the physicality of it, the, the fighting and the chasing and the running and somebody who wouldn't complain about those things. And my sister is all in about that. Like, that's what she wants to do. You know, she's like, jump off a roof. Sure. You know, drown her in some water. She's like, let's do it. Let's give so it a shot. <laughs> I, let's give it a shot. So, so that was, uh, you know, worked out really well for the, the movie. I think she's a great final girl. And yeah, Melinda so is a, yes. yeah. Um, and Melinda is a good friend of mine. And I've always wanted to write something for her. I mean, she played in Misery, uh, the Kathy Bates character, right? She's like mm -hmm. obviously perfect for it. Yeah. And she's such a great actress. She's a mainly a stage actress, but she transferred to film uh, extremely well. And I think it has to do with the fact that she's so good at taking directions and she's so good at what she does in general that the um, transformation was sort of effortless for her. Yes, and I would say she probably has the, the most complex character and role in the film as well. Um, absolutely, absolutely. We, we, and we did a lot of stuff. I mean, one time I, I shoved her in a bathroom and turned out the lights. And, Just for uh, fun. We <laughs> told her that I wanted her to think about what it was like being a little kid and waiting for, you know, hearing your father, your the men in the house walking around. And she was in there. And I mean, and she totally commit. That's what's so amazing about her. Mm -hmm. And she committed for every single scene that she did. Agreed. And, and you could tell watching it. Was this the first slasher movie that she did? Has she ever done anything like this? Well, you know? we've done other slasher movies. Like I, I've known her. Oh, my gosh. I've known her for a very long time now. And okay. we did our own homemade slasher movies uh, before that, where sometimes she played a character that was similar. And I, I really wanted to get that character and put it in a a major movie because it's just so much fun and she just sort of yes. really really gets it so we've all we've done other things together before this yeah awesome awesome, yeah, awesome. she was perfect for it um ben you, you got a question yeah um well, I've got, so when we'll go in let's have a look <laughs> if not i can i can jump in yeah so there's there's a bit in the film i've got to know who came up with um Whose idea was it to have the bag of penises? Because me and Aaron have, have talked <laughs> and, and what are they going to do with it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the whole concept of the show was originally written without the bag of, uh, mm -hmm. of, of dicks. So there, it was not in there originally. So after I got the story down and I was looking through it, and, you know, of course, you're, when you're dealing with a budget, you really need to have something that's going to stand out. What is going to make this Santa Claus stand out? You know, and it took some time to sort of like, you know, figure it out. And then, you know, all of a sudden it was like, oh my God, what if, you know, it was oh, yeah. it's just so crazy. And with this type of movie, with a low budget type of movie, you can do something that crazy. And you probably mm -hmm. should do something that crazy in yeah. order to stand out from everybody else. I mean, there's no sense in playing it safe when you're dealing with such a low budget. You know, go for it. Okay. And the reaction from people when I would mention it was just, you know, was just in shock and funny. And it, it got such a big reaction. It was kind of like, yeah, I think we got to do it. I think we got to go for it and just make this crazy. Yeah, it was good. It was good. I don't yeah. usually watch the film with my legs crossed, so. <laughs> Especially in the beginning, right? Yeah. What, what's, yeah. In the, what's in the bag? Yeah, yeah. what's um, in the bag? I was thinking about seven, right? Um, well, yeah, speaking right. Of, <laughs> right, right, what's in the box? Um, yeah. I, I also, I, the, great question, Ben. I, I also picked up on, um, I guess I would say an homage to other horror films, like the uh, scene with the girl in the bed and the knife coming up through the bottom made me think of Alone in the Dark. Uh, I don't know yes, if that absolutely. was intentional. Okay, awesome. Absolutely, I love that movie. Yes, and then um, what? Well, I guess what other movies did you did you uh, nod? You know, put a nod to in the film? Well, you know, a lot of people and a lot of people. The first thing they say is that Sleepaway Camp. 
Yeah. Uh, and yes. and actually, you know, Sleepaway Lake Camp is not one of my favorite slasher movies. And it was not what I I I really was inspired by at all. I was much more inspired by Deadly Blessings. And that is the movie That's that sort of it, yeah that I sort of took from um not necessarily sleepaway camp I know that they're similar but all of this sort of comes from you know psycho right I mean that's where the first twist sort of uh happened and there's been so many different variations of it and this variation I hadn't seen before so so that's where that came from mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay um I actually, I mentioned that I watched this for the first time a few weeks ago. Um, I loved it. And I watched it Thanksgiving week with my niece who was visiting. Um, she's actually 20 years old, so she's not a little kid. Um, just to put, you know, yeah. clarify that. <laughs> um, and she doesn't normally watch horror films. So she was screaming, jumping up, leaving the room, coming back in. She's like, don't do that. Um, and it was so much fun watching it with uh, someone who had that experience with it. And I think I had... You know, I had the same experience as well, but I guess it was maybe amplified having someone like that. Um, but she was very excited that I told her that we were going to be doing this video. She's very excited about that. Uh, and she did, she did send me a question. Um, she wanted to know why we don't see Jamie's face really, even at the end. I know we sort of get a, a glimpse of him, but not really. Yeah. Um, what was the, the reason we behind that? Well, that was a, that was a big, it was actually a big thing that originally, as you could see in the movie, you could see that he takes his mask off at the end and we did film his face. And I okay. did want to show his face because for me, I think it established at the end that the real monster was the mother. And so he puts the mask on the mother. So she uncovers and then he takes off the mask and we see him and so just to sort of see it in like in a different light like where it all stems from um but the producers did not want to show his face and i understand why they did it but we it was a big thing going back and forth i mean it wasn't no argument or anything like that i mean i i was fine with it either way but my vision was is that we see his face i see and um and they thought that it took away from the mystery of the character that he suddenly wasn't, you know, he became something different in the way that's what I wanted. And they were thinking about sequels. And so it all sort of made sense to go either way. Um, and in the end, it was no face. You kind of see it though. I, I would say it's sort of a happy medium. Kind of, they gave they gave me that. They gave me that. I think so kind of, I, I, I at least got that. Was why wasn't it from that? It's it's like do you see it? Don't you see it? You, you, yeah, yeah. It's, it's I mean you know it was and also like with Halloween at the end of Halloween you know you see Michael mm -hmm. Myers' face. Uh, you don't moment, really do yeah. that with the other Halloween movies, but with with that one you did, and so that's yes. sort of what I wanted to emulate. And it also made me think of Black Christmas, another awesome um, Christmas horror movie where you actually don't yeah. see Billy's face. You see his eye in that one moment. Um, yeah. And that yeah. that's enough. The mystery of it is terrifying. Yeah. Great suspense. It's what made it so creepy, the unknown. But I didn't really think that All Through the House was that subtle, right? So yes. I was okay with showing his face because we were just being, just throwing it all at you. Yes, yes. And I like the idea that the mother is the monster because even without seeing his face, it's very clear. I guess we're giving away some spoilers here. We try not to. Um, it's very clear that she's the, the evil behind everything. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you got? What do you got, Ben? Right. Um, I've got one, but I just want to know before, as you've got your Christmas decorations up in the background, do you well, my have... parents. I'm at my parents' house. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You yourself have any of the decorations from the movie that you um decorate the house with are there any decorations from the movie that i decorate my place with um i don't think that there is any more um i think i do have some things but they're in storage and i have uh i have the 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 doll that uh jamie has in the the movie still so but i don't really uh i do decorate my place but not like my parents do Awesome. Perfect background, uh, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so I'll just um, 
that was just a quick but um one of the proper questions for you you were saying um that you sort of changed a few things around did it change a lot from when you had your first ideas of doing it or did he did you sort of stay on the track that you wanted yeah it all pretty much stayed together except for that one element mm -hmm. um but I think that at the end, of, I mean, of course, I went back and forth on it. I'm like, do I really want to do this? Is this going to be too much? Is it going to, you know, it, and finally, I, I just decided that it has to be. It, it has to be. This is not, you know, a million dollar movie where you have to be so careful. Um, <laughs> so really, the, the only thing that really changed was adding that element into it. Cool. I have a fun question. What's uh, what's your yeah. favorite Christmas horror movie? Well, my favorite Christmas horror movie is obviously Black other than Christmas. other than All Through the House. Yes, other than All Through I, the House. Yeah, you. obviously. Yeah, a uh, Black Christmas <laughs> is uh, my favorite, and I, I even like the first remake. I did not like the second remake, but the yes. uh, the first remake I I really enjoyed because of the atmosphere. I, I I just think that it's a great Christmas horror movie to watch, even though I I don't think it really represents the original black christmas so much i, I kind of look at it as something on its own oh, the, but the, the uh, third one not yeah. so much yeah i was not it, a fan of the third i would choose the first one too and and the remake the 06 one is pretty good it's it's a fun slasher um i like yeah the, it's my God, the yeah. cookie cutting scene yikes yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i've i've yeah. heard such bad things about the new one i haven't even i haven't seen it um, yeah, I heard bad things about it either, but I was like, oh, I got to go see it. I love Black Christmas. Maybe, you know, they'll, it will turn out OK. Maybe I'll enjoy it. And no, not so much. I, no, I, I haven't heard anyone. I haven't talked to oh. anyone who actually liked it. Um, I'm not sure but, if I watched it but Black Christmas is always in my top five horror movies, not even just Christmas horror movies. And I, I saw it um, last week or this past week um, on the big screen. There was a double feature event. I think I mentioned they had yeah, that. Amazing. And Silent Night, Deadly Night on the big screen was awesome yeah. with an audience. Um, I, I know you mentioned uh, before we started recording that you got to see all through the house in the theater with an audience um, interacting with the film. And it was kind of similar to that. Can you uh, speak to that a little bit more, what that was like? Well, it's just, it's a little bit surreal. You know, you work on this project and you don't really think, like I didn't think that it was going to end up you know, in a theater being watched by a packed audience. I didn't think that I'd be talking about it now, still, after all these years. So it's definitely um, been a lot of fun and a lot of joy to uh, awesome. to see people's reaction to it and to see them respond to it and having a good time with it. I mean, because that's what movies are about, right? I mean, they're not always all about that, but if you can watch a movie and have a good time, then, um, then, that's something to be proud of. And and I completely agree with that. This is one to see. I did a mini review on my page and got the word out as much as I could and basically said, you must see this film. Yeah, yeah I watched it. Um, I think I watched it last year when COVID was sort of still about. So um, we yeah. couldn't go anywhere. And I didn't know anything of it. it I think it was on Amazon. Um, and I was really surprised. I think I did say to you, Aaron, didn't I? About, I, I think so, it. yeah. And it was... I was really surprised and obviously then uh, we got the interview. So I watched it again and there was so much I'd forgot. And I think I even I enjoyed it even more this time around. So you've done really Great. good. good. Great. Actually, Thank you. It is probably one of the sort of top Christmas horror movies, I'd say anyway. there's I've seen a lot this. Um... <laughs> well, thank <laughs> you. I appreciate that. I really do. I, I mean, I'm just like, I excited to hear people still talking about it people still you know posting about it i mean it, it is you know, i didn't think that this would be happening so i, I think there's sort of a, a mix though out there i think some people are just like you know with the whole bag of dicks thing yeah. um <laughs> i'm just mortified by it you know they and and then there's the other people who just get it who just get it and go in and have fun with it so yes so yeah it's, it's great um, that's great I have one. Or go ahead, Ben. Did you have another question? I was no, to... I was just saying it was good. It, it sort of. Re I was just going to say it reached out to everyone. There's sort of a fear in there for everybody. Obviously, for the male side with the chopping of yeah. the dicks off, yeah. um, and yes. there's the story with um, Mrs. Garrett and 
obviously, like you said, walking around and hearing the mail in the house and then just the mm-hmm. all out horror and somebody trying to, yeah, I think it's, it sort of reaches out all round, which is yeah, good. Yeah, I think so too. Um, so we actually have some viewer questions who are also fans of the film. Um, the first one came in from Fake Voorhees on Instagram. And I'm looking at my phone here because he sent this quote which is taken right from the film, which I think is awesome. Um, where one of the characters says, collections are just a waste of time and money. Only boring people with nothing better to do collect things, which I think is um, hysterical because I'm a collector, Ben's a collector. Me too. Um, okay, good, that, that's my question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, did someone say that to you in, in your, I don't know, in, in real no, life? No, you know, I don't even know how I came up with the idea. I just was writing and it just came out. And uh, it's just part of her character and it just, it worked. I don't know, you know, it's just sometimes those things just happen, you know? Yes, yes. Oh, And it got a big reaction in the theaters too. I bet, yeah. I mean, look at at Ben's collection behind him. Pretty impressive. Yeah, I have my (laughs) own horror collection, of course. Like in superheroes, I'm a big uh, DC fan. So I I collect, yeah, I got to stop collecting. I'm a, I'm a massive DC fan. So, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'm huge. I love Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman. Those are my yeah. three favorite. Yeah. And uh, very cool. Yeah. Ever since I was, I was a kid. Awesome. So I've got a few more. I'm just going to read from my iPad. Um, yeah. So sure. two, two, actual, two viewers came in, up with the same question. So I kind of merged it into one. <clears throat> um, this is from Nate K, the Sorosaurus and Matt James Salem. They wanted to know if there are plans for a sequel. Um, Will there be a continuation of the plot from the first film? Um, And if not, could you share any ideas of what you might do with a sequel? Um, Well, there's definitely been conversations about a sequel. Um, I hadn't ever really planned to do a sequel. I mean, my whole, the whole idea was to do this for a little bit of money and then be able to do another movie with more money. And, and so I don't know if all through the house would fit into that. Right. And I would really like to, you know, when you're dealing with such little money, you have to be aware of that Mm -hmm. and know that you're only going to be able to get to a certain level of quality with such little money. And so, you know, it's one of the reasons why we tried to go big and go campy and it was forgiving of a lot of the other stuff that we couldn't bring because of uh, financial reasons. Mm -hmm. So getting more money, I have other ideas. I've got other movies. I've got other things that I would like to do and, uh, and, and not be, you know, bounded by that uh, restriction. Yes. But that being said, that doesn't mean that a sequel to Altering the House is off the table. The producers have talked to me about it on a number of occasions. <laughs> and when the uh, the time is right, then we'll see what happens. Awesome. Good answer. So never, never say never. So never, there right? is an idea for it. Yeah, never say never. There is awesome. an idea for it. There's an idea for two more that would follow. And, uh, and we'll see. Awesome. Good answer. Um, the next one is from Carlos D. Carlos N. Saw on Instagram. Um, we talked about this a little bit, but where did you get the idea for the Santa mask? And how much family help did you get in making the movie? We talked about this a little bit, but I wanted to um, yeah. give them. Yeah, the Santa mask was a, a process because I knew that we didn't have, like Jessica Cameron was our celebrity, right? Jessica Camera, Jennifer Wanger, you know, they have a big fan base. My sister has a big fan base. So those were sort of, those were our stars, but we didn't have like a big star. We didn't have a selling point. And I know that with these types of movies, you know, if you have Jason, Jason is your star, right? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make sure that our killer would be our star and that he would look perfect. So we did a lot of different types of masks. We had lots of different types of masks made. I knew I wanted him in a mask when I was a little kid and I saw the Silent Night, Deadly Night trailer Mm -hmm. with the ax coming, with the hand coming out. Such a great poster, right? But I was always disappointed that he wasn't wearing a mask because to me, it would just seem much more scarier. So I wanted to make sure that Jamie had the perfect mask and that he would look uh, terrifying. So we took a lot of time with that. Awesome. A lot of different masks. 
and right. this was the one that spoke to everybody and it paid off it's very scary yeah nice um i got one more and this is from horror movie and the beer on instagram um where did you find that well we talked about this a little bit but where did you find the three leading actresses and the other cast members i guess well this is new what was the audition phase like maybe you could speak to that um the audition like jessica cameron did show up for the audition awesome. and um yeah, and obviously I was like, oh my God, I'm like, Jessica Cameron's here. Like, okay, yeah, you got the part, Jessica. You're in, yes. <laughs> you don't have to audition. Okay, it's it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> so yeah, Jessica was was great to work with and she brought a lot to the uh to the to the show and she did audition for it and she I mean she is a pro is a pro, so she obviously knocked it out. And for that part, I wanted to sort of do like a you know Drew Barrymore type of thing. Mm -hmm. um and have her uh be in it in the beginning uh, my sister obviously didn't have to audition she's been auditioning all her life for this part so she got so it. she got that and the other others were just came in for the audition too cool um ben i want to give you a chance you got some other questions lined up um you were saying obviously uh you were doing this movie to hopefully get some more money to do a bigger budget movie is there anything in the works at the moment? And can you tell us about it, any of it? <laughs> uh, well, there there is some things in the works, but when you get pulled away on different jobs, I mean, I, I, I was fortunate enough to get other work uh, from All Through the House. And the last thing that I just did, and it's I just finished it, was a reality show that takes place in a ghost town. And, um, and it's a competition show and it's, it's cool. really different than anything else that's out there. I can't really get into all of that, but when you commit to something like that, you know, there, it's a long process. You know, there's the developing process, there's the finishing process, there's the post process. So, you know, in the middle of all of that, you know, you can't make another movie, but there is some stuff on the horizon that, um, that I can't talk, bring, you know, I'm not able to do that. That's up to the producers yeah. when they want to announce it and how they want to announce it. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll just have to wait for that. Cool. Okay. Okay. But definitely in the realm of uh, what I love doing, the slasher realm. Awesome. Brilliant. Well, with that, your shirt is amazing. Um, Thank can you. Can you uh, let the, uh, the viewers and fans know where they could grab a shirt? Yeah, it's uh it's done by a, a company called Shirt Clam. And sure. you can either, yeah, look them up online or you could go onto Facebook. I just posted a link where there is a coupon code uh, to get a discount. Very cool. So that probably would be the best. And you can find me at Todd Nunes on Facebook. Awesome. Or you could look at All and, Through the House on Facebook. Okay, I will do that. And you're also on Instagram as well yes yeah that's how we connected um grab a copy of this if you haven't already check it out awesome Definitely. new installment in the christmas horror subgenre. um i loved it this has been so awesome talking with you today todd um do you have any questions for us is there anything else that you would like to, to chat about um i don't have any questions i'm just so happy you asked uh me to be on the show and uh i love talking about all things horror so this is uh is always fun for me awesome same for us so uh let's see as always um if there's anything you would like us to cover in a future video add it in a comment and we will consider it yep uh go over to instagram uh follow us over on there and if you come across uh these videos sub to them because it helps the channel and uh Cheers for watching. All right, awesome. Bye, everyone. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. Thank you.